What's going on YouTube? Chris, back to another video. Something I've been super excited uh, to actually make. It's been a long process to get to this point. Um, but several years ago, my wife actually saw an image, I think it was on Instagram if I'm not mistaken, of custom made uh, like Game Boy that would run NES, Super Nintendo games. Um, it had like colored screen, everything like that. So I said, yeah, that, it's definitely pretty easy to do. You put a Raspberry Pi, Raspberry Pi can run all these type of emulators and different ROMs and stuff like that. And it's not the first time I've uh, seen something like this um, and I can make one. So I set out on a journey down this huge rabbit hole of making a custom Game Boy that could play these games and uh, basically be an almost like a Nintendo Switch on the go. Um, and so that's what I'm here to share with you today. I finally finished it. Um, this is my custom Game Boy DMG, basically the original Game Boy case, but with a lot of nice uh, modifications and upgrades to it. So let's go ahead and take a look. Interesting enough that this actually today marks the 30th anniversary of the original Game Boy. Um, so this is quite fitting video uh, to share with you all today. Um, so this, there's a huge community uh, on Pseudomod that makes custom Game Boys in various different casings, um, Game Boy Advance. Uh, there's ones that fit into like a, one of those like Altoids tin cans, um, all these different type of form factors. Um, but I wanted to keep mine original uh, using an original actual Game Boy case um, with some slight upgrades as you can see here. So on the front, we immediately see that there's actually four buttons uh, versus just the original two. So I had to use a, a drill press and using a step bit created these two different holes. Um, so now we have that. We still have a working speaker. Um, but up here, we still have your power switch. Turn that on. And there you have it. So it's booting up. Um, so right now there's NES, Super Nintendo uh, games, Game Boy and Game Boy Color on here. Um, so a couple things that I wanted to actually uh, have. Um, so there's actually a kit that you can purchase on Pseudomod from a guy form named Kite. Uh, so basically he puts these whole kits together that includes the screen, the custom PCB board, uh, the speaker, the cabling. Um, there's actually inside is the Raspberry Pi, which we'll get into in a minute. And all you have to do is have your own battery, your case, your buttons, um, and maybe a little bit of a soldering work depending on what you want to do. Um, so it's pretty easy after you actually do all the, the work in terms of uh, cutting out the Game Boy itself. Um, but now they even have cases that come pretty much pre-made with all the cutouts you need. Um, so the work is done and has gotten a lot simpler since uh, it first started. But I wanted to make this uh, as original as possible. Um, when I first started this whole project in Endeavor, um, I went one direction and then a lot of setbacks happened in my life, uh, such as moving out to California. I also had my injury on my finger I, and everything else, just life happened. Um, so this whole project has been on hold for many, many months and years. Originally, I wanted to have the actual cartridge be basically an SD card to where you could insert it and take it out, um, which right up here, I do have the cutout for the micro SD card that would s slot in, um, but that's changed, but I still wanted to have the nostalgia of removing your cartridge and putting in and, and turning it on. And so I've left that at least functionality. Um, next is we have the, the volume knob over here, or the, yeah, the volume wheel, so to speak. Uh, so this still increases, decreases the volume and uh, it functions just fine. You still have that nice feeling of turning that wheel. Uh, we have a full USB port, so you can plug in a keyboard. If you wanted an, an external uh, controller, you can do that, which this supports Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, so you can always use a Bluetooth controller, so that's awesome. Um, over here, bring in 2019, is a USB-C port, so this charges via USB-C, so that makes it convenient with all of my Android devices that I charge. And then over here is the micro SD card slot, uh, which you can easily pop in and out. I have a 128 gig um, in there right now. And then, um, so yeah, we've already seen the front, the power switch is still the same 
that works just like that. And then on the bottom, we have a headphone jack. So that is still there. Um, so if I wanted to, I can plug headphones in. The speaker also still works. So up front, we have a 320 by 240 LCD display, which uh, is quite adequate for what you're wanting to do on a machine like this. You can read text pretty easily and game definitely perfectly fine, not a problem. And um, there's a two watt uh, speaker down here, which will output your audio. You still get that nostalgia of holding the whole Game Boy. Um, I've added buttons back here in the back, which um, was not really what I was wanting to how to implement them. Um, this also does limit the amount of games that I can play versus having two buttons for L L1, L2, R1, R2. Um, so now I, I just only have L1 and R1 at this point. So I can't play like PlayStation games or games that actually utilized controls that had two trigger buttons in the back. So this is running RetroPie um, in terms of the actual kind of like operating system which you flash onto the micro SD card. Um, and then this is a 4,500 milliamp hour battery that uh, will power the entire thing itself, um, which is easy to, to replace. You just wanna make sure that you have the proper connector that plugs into the board. Um, but inside it is a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 3, uh, Compute Module 3. So basically it's um, an entire Raspberry Pi 3 in a pretty much a dim slot about this big. Um, so you get the same performance, you get one gig of RAM, like 1.2 gigahertz quad core processor, um, all inside this form factor. Um, this is a plastic screen, uh, screen guard basically that has a Game Boy Zero, so kind of more traditional look I was going for. Um, they do have tempered glass ones now, but, um, but since I started this build way before that was even available, I just kept the plastic one. It'll scratch easier, but at least I don't have to worry about cracking um, really too much since plastic is a little bit more resilient in that sense. You do have the ability to add um, like a joystick in the middle or down here if you wanted to. So instead of using a D-pad, games that utilized like a joystick uh, type controller such as original PlayStation. Something I'm probably going to do um, in the future, I'm not sure yet depending on how performance is, in more intensive games is adding a fan in this. Um, so right now there is a heat sink on the actual processor, um, but due to the amount of space limitation that I've fortunately left because of this cartridge, um, that's taken away space for the fan. So I might have to actually um, cut out slots in the cartridge and some portion back here somehow. So that way fresh air can enter into the case and exhaust out. Maybe I can cut slits um, along the sides or maybe off into the side over here. I can direct airflow that way. Um, but this is something I, like I'm finally able to finish and I'm excited because it's just so cool that that technology now has gone so far that we can pack so much performance into to something like our, our smartphones. Yes, you can put emulators on a smartphone, but you don't get like the same original feeling of a Game Boy on here. Um, all the buttons are still like, they all still act the same as with the rubber uh, pads underneath and things like that. You can customize all your buttons that you want. Um, they have tons of casings with different colors. Uh, yeah, um, so it, it, depending on which route you want to go, um, fully custom in terms of like using a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is originally what I was going to use, um, can range and affect the cost of one of these, um, but it'll range um, depending on how basic you want. It can be as cheap as maybe like 50 bucks um, because then you have to buy the actual screen and, and things like that. There are several different types and it's really a rabbit hole like I mentioned. Um, there's so many different things you can do with these things and, and just a Raspberry Pi in general. Um, but this whole kit could uh, set you back around like 130 bucks or so. Um, and then the case, the battery. Um, and of course, if you don't screw anything up, um, if you are making one um, by scratch by hand, by actually wiring everything yourself, 
Um, you're definitely going to need some good soldering skills, soldering iron. So there's tools that you're going to need to get along with this um, to, to make it an easy uh, project for you. So we have Super Mario Brothers 3 that originally launched on the NES. You can see the volume is 100%. Oh, that sound, the music. Brings me back to the days of playing on the NES. Now I can do this on the go, and it's just so fun to have. Um, yes, it's bulky, but who cares, you know? Like, someone sees you rocking this, they're gonna take it, have a double take, you know? Still got the original support number, which supposedly actually still works in 2019. Um, so yeah, buttons work. And then to exit, we'll just uh, go home just like that. And then you have all your games and things like this. Game Color, Nintendo, Game Boy. And then basically it saves and safely shuts down. And then you can take that out. So that was my custom Game Boy running RetroPie. I want to thank everyone for your support and checking out my channel. If you have any questions on this Game Boy, let me know in the comments down below. Let me know what your favorite game was for Nintendo gaming consoles, whether it be Nintendo, uh, Super Nintendo, NES, Game Boy systems. Let me know. Until next time, I'll see you all around. Take care.